I'm going to talk about the nasal cavity. All right, so nasal cavity and nasal pharynx have a number of structures, and the first view we're going to look at to see the superior, middle, and inferior nasal conche is this coronal section through the nasal cavity, where that line down the middle is showing the nasal septum, and then that's right down the middle, and it separates our two um, parts of the nasal cavity. Then each nasal cavity has the following components, a superior nasal concha, middle nasal concha, and inferior nasal concha called turbinate bones. And uh, they form, um, they come out from the lateral nasal wall, and underneath each of them they have these spaces called the superior meatus, middle meatus, and inferior meatus. And these meati, as air brings in to the nasal cavity, or this air is swirled and touches the mucosal lining, and the air is warmed up, the air is filtered, and the air is, um, uh, adds some humidity to it so it doesn't dry out the nasal mucosa. Um, now what we're going to do is take this coronal section. This dotted line represents the section we're going to take, and shing, we're going to open it up like a book. So here we've got, it's a cool view that Frank Netter show, uh, illustrates. So there's the medial wall of the nasal septum, and there's the lateral wall of the nasal cavity. And... On the lateral wall is a superior nasal concha, a middle nasal concha, and an inferior nasal concha, just as we showed in the coronal section. Now coming into the nasal cavity is cranial nerve one. The olfactory nerve is for smell. And so there we've got uh, these different branches coming to the uh, nasal septum and the na lateral nasal wall. And in the sagittal section, there we've got the olfactory bulb and tract. And then they send there through the cribriform foramen of the uh, ethmoid bone there we've got those olfactory nerves coming into the top of the nasal cavity. And so right there where that arrow is showing is that's where we see it in this one image. Olfactory nerve, special sensation, smell. Cranial nerve V-2 is the maxillary nerve. It does general sensation to the nasal cavity, pain, temperature, touch, vibration, and so forth. And so there we've got cranial nerve V2 and it sends off branches that'll go to the nasal septum, branches that go to the lateral nasal wall, and then even branches that go down to the hard palate to do general sensation, which do the hard pal does the hard palate and part of the gums, uh, the buck, uh, so the lingual surface of the gums for general sensation. All right, now in this sagittal section here, we see superior, middle, and inferior nasal concha. What we're going to do is cut those nasal, nasal concha and show that in those meati, superior meatus, in middle meatus, and inferior meatus, we're going to have the communications for the paranasal sinuses and opening of the nasal lacrimal duct. So there we've got the opening of the frontal nasal duct that drains the frontal sinus and ethmoid cells. And then here we have the opening of the middle ethmoid uh, air cells as well as posterior ethmoid aerosols. And then here we've got the opening for the sphenoid sinus. And then here we have the opening for the maxillary sinus. And you just need to know that the meati drain those paranasal sinuses. And then finally, the nasal lacrimal duct empties into the nasal cavity in the inferior meatus. So let's start with that first. Here we've got the nasal cavity and the opening of the nasal lacrimal duct. So there's our lacrimal gland that under innervation of facial nerve, um, the greater petrosal branch, causes you to cry. Number seven, makes you cry, closes your eye, innervates every gland in the head except the one it goes through. Well, here's seven innervating the lacrimal gland. Tears then go down in the eye and they wash through the eye and, and help to keep the eye moist and uh, then excess uh, tears go into these uh, canaliculi that drain into the lacrimal sac and drain down this nasal lacrimal duct and enter into the nasal cavity in the inferior meatus. And that's what we have right there. Okay, next are our paranasal sinuses. So our paranasal sinuses are hollow chambers named for bones in which they reside. So there's our frontal sinus, which is usually a paired a uh, hollow chamber within the frontal bone, and then the ethmoid sinus, also called ethmoid air cells because there's anterior, middle, and posterior chambers of these honeycomb-looking uh, sinuses in the ethmoid bone. And then the maxillary sinus that flanks the nasal cavity. It's below the orbit and above the maxillary teeth. And then the sphenoid sinus we can't see, <coughs> pardon me, see in this view. All right, let's look at an anterior and lateral x-ray. In blue, there we have our nasal cavity that's outlined, and then there we've got in red the maxillary uh, sinuses outlined, and then in green, there's our ethmoid sinuses, and then there's in yellow our frontal sinus, uh, 
And then finally in red, there is our sphenoid sinus. And the nerve that innervates these paranasal sinuses is the trigeminal nerve, primarily uh, V1 and V2. And there is a key that shows the nasal cavity, maxillary, ethmoid, frontal, and sphenoid sinuses. All right, now the nasal cavity and nasal pharynx has the opening of the auditory tube, also known as the pharyngeotympanic tube, also known as your eustachian tube. All three of those are synonymous. So in the sagittal section, there's the opening of the pharyngeotympanic tube or your auditory tube. And it's called the pharyngeotympanic tube because that yellow arrow shows the nasal pharynx in this coronal section, which then goes into this tube that goes into the middle ear, hence the name pharyngeo tympanic tube. It's also called the auditory tube because it goes from the nasal pharynx into the middle ear where auditory area occurs and then eustachian and, and then uh, yeah eustachian tube for the um, uh, scientists who discovered it. But now notice this communication between nasal pharynx through this pharyngeotympanic tube in the middle ear that if we look at this other section, there's the middle ear, there's these openings called the uh, adidas to the mastoid antrum and then to the mastoid air cells. And so here's the communication from your throat all the way to the mastoid air cells. Now the pharyngeotympanic tube in an infant is more horizontal than in an adult. You'll notice that in an infant it's more horizontal, in an adult it's more uh, oblique, and this uh, passageway makes it so that uh, gravity, usually an adult, works against to get from infections in the nasal pharynx into the middle ear. Less likely in an adult, but more likely in an infant because the infant's usually on their back because they sleep a lot, they nurse a lot, and because it's more uh, horizontal, gravity can't prevent as well infections from spreading from the nasal cavity into the middle ear.